Welcome to Average Joe's. Today we are looking at the Stinger Break and Jump Cue from McDermott. So this cue has two different jobs to do, braking and jumping. How well will it perform at both? Let's find out. So it's worth noting that the Stinger brand is owned, operated and distributed by McDermott. But technically it's not a McDermott branded product. Now products that actually carry the McDermott name are manufactured by McDermott in their own factory in the USA. Whereas the additional brands that they own, things like Lucky, Star, Sledgehammer and indeed uh, Stinger, are actually manufactured in Asia. But as we mentioned before in some of our Q reviews, having a Q that's manufactured in China should definitely not be something that puts you off. China is currently producing some of the best pool cues in the world for some of the biggest name brand pool cue manufacturers in the world. So just because it's made in China, it doesn't necessarily mean it's bad quality. In fact, it can be quite the opposite. So the Stinger NG01 has a retail price of $360. However, if you shop around, you can get it a little bit cheaper. The best deal that we found was $325 on Amazon. I'm going to add links for you to this queue on Amazon. So if you're interested in it and you want to get the best deal possible and help support us along the way, please be sure to use the links in the video description below this video on YouTube. Now included in that price, McDermott include a full lifetime warranty and that includes warranty against warpage. So our Stinger Jump and Brake Cue uh, comes in one of these clear uh, poly bags. Now it's a shame, uh, we've mentioned before in some of our Q reviews, uh, but when it comes to a cue that you're spending several hundreds of dollars on, uh, it would be nice to have a kind of a better first impression. It'd be nice to have some kind of, um, you know, a box of some type, uh, as some of the uh, Q manufacturers are now starting to do. So it's a little bit deflating when something that you're investing a considerable amount of money in uh, comes in uh, this type of packaging. And uh, hopefully that's something that Moderma would look at in the future, because uh, it definitely would be better for first impressions if they could come up with a better solution than these clear poly bags. But at the end of the day, it's only packaging and you're going to throw it away anyway. <laughs> Cleveland, breathe into the bag. It'll calm you down. Uh, Peter, I'm not sure that not that's now, Lois. What counts is what's inside the packaging. So let's get this opened, see what features it has, and the all-important first impressions. Okay, let's take a look. So there's our butt. And there's our shaft. So this particular one that we have is the NG01 and this comes with the, uh, the wrapless uh, handle. Uh, obviously there are other variations uh, of the uh, Stinger Q, uh, so if you prefer a wrap handle that is uh, available as a different model number. But this is the NG01. So the handle here uh, is rosewood and has a very deep uh, kind of dark brown stain. Uh, which really shows off the, uh, the grain of the wood really nicely. And we also have a contrasting uh, butt plate section right here, and that's uh, finished in maple. Now the forearm here is made from uh, maple, and it says that the, uh, the four decorative triangles, uh, says in the specification uh, that these are also rosewood. And of course, being a brake and jump cue, this breaks down to two sections, and it's listed as a quick release, and that's exactly what it is. Uh, most of that's smooth, uh, with a little threaded section right at the end there. Clicks together. Ah, and also, oh, there's our question uh, answered. When you look on the uh, the end, uh, you can uh, very much see that these are indeed uh, uh, wooden inlays. And just printed up towards the uh, front here, uh, we've got a patent number, and that will be the patent number uh, for the Stinger uh, tip technology, because uh, that is a patented uh, design. A little reminder for you just there. And for our joint here, this is a 3 8 by 10. And on the butt plate here, we have the uh, McDermott logo. And for the uh, butt cap uh, itself, uh, this is the standard McDermott uh, butt cap, uh, complete with the McDermott logo there as well. So next, let's take a look at the uh, Stinger shaft. My name is John Shaft. So obviously this is a maple shaft. And we have the usual uh, last few inches of the shaft there with the uh, varnish uh, finish and a nice crisp clean line there uh, where the varnish ends and we have the uh, Stinger uh, logo 
uh, just down at the bottom there. And in the end there, uh, we definitely have some kind of uh, insert. Uh, almost looks like wood, uh, but I don't think it is. When you look at the spec, it does mention that it's got a, a phenolic insert in the joint. So although that looks like a different kind of wood, yeah, it's the same colour as the um, as the phenolic tip, I guess. And uh, moving on to the other end of the queue, which is where the uh, where the patent lies, we have very nice uh, ferrule here. You can't feel any transition at all between the end of the shaft uh, and the uh, start of the ferrule there. And the tip here is where the kind of the technology side of this uh, queue lies. As a 13.25 uh, millimeter uh, tip in phenolic resin. Uh, but what's special about this tip is uh, it actually passes, uh, it's got a, like a center to it, like a core that comes off of the back of the tip, passes all the way through the ferrule and goes quite a way um, further in. So that'd be drilled all the way through. So that ferrule will have a hole in it, the end of the queue will have a hole in it, and this um, special tip uh, will pass right through the center of both of those, it's probably somewhere around that kind of length in, in total. And what that's designed to do, it's designed to um, transfer the energy uh, directly down the centre uh, of the queue, which of course would tie in quite well with it having the, uh, the phenolic uh, insert on the other side uh, for the joint as well. And McDermott claimed that this patented tip design effectively increases the uh, sweet spot. With this increased sweet spot, you can even miss hit the ball slightly and still get the intended result. Now that's great news for me because I can miss hit balls all day long. So I'll definitely be putting that to the test. <laughs> it definitely has a very slight uh, taper uh, to it when you put it on a uh, flat surface. You can just see the light uh, coming through. Uh, it's quite um, a long taper. The shoulder of the taper is right around here. I would expect to see it kind of nearer this area. But it's right the way uh, down here, but it's got a very, very slight uh, pro taper to it. And as you would expect from uh, a McDermott Q, it's really, really smooth, beautifully, beautifully finished. So I've had some time to look this queue over and I've got to say, first impressions are excellent. It definitely feels like a very top end product. It's got a great look to it and all of the components seem to be very, very high quality. I really like the uh, mix between the uh, rosewood and the maple as well. It gives it a really nice, distinctive look. So we know that it definitely looks great and it appears to be very, very well made. Uh, but there's a few technical tests we need to get stuck into, so let's do that next. I'm just here to drop off my son. Justin, Justin. So let's do some spec checks on our Stinger Q. First of all, starting with the length. So our Stinger Q has its specification listed at 58 inches. And for the shaft, we have a length of 29 and 3 quarter inches. And for the butt, that measures in at 16 and 3 quarter inches without the forearm. And for the actual forearm itself, that measures in at 12 and 1 quarter inches. That gives us a total Q length of 58 and 3 quarter inches, including the butt cap, or 58 and 1 quarter inches without the butt cap. Next, moving on to diameters. And for the tip, it did come in a little short of the specification of 13.25 millimeters, measuring in at 13.12 millimeters. And for the shaft, at the joint end, we have 21.99 millimeters. And at the second joint, we have 26.6 millimeters. And finally, the end of the butt comes in at 32.3 millimeters. Next, we're moving on to weight. And the shaft alone weighed in at 4.45 ounces. And the butt without the forearm weighed in at 9.4 ounces. And as for the forearm, that came in at 5.5 ounces. So adding all those up, we get a total Q weight of 19.35 ounces, which is coming in a little bit over our specified weight of 19 ounces. So let's take a quick look at the part of the queue that you'll never normally see, and let's get the butt cap removed. And as you would expect from McDermott, even this part of the queue is actually very, very well finished internally. And as you can see, we have a one ounce weight for our 19 ounce queue. Next up, let's take a quick look at center of balance. And for the full break queue, the balance point is 20 and 1 8 inches from the end of the butt, including the butt cap. So now we've removed the butt completely and stripped this down to its jump cue form. And the center of balance for this is 14 and a half inches from the end of the handle. Most folks just don't seem to have a taste for testicles no more. 
So next up, we need to test the stinger for the all important factor when it comes to pull cues, straightness. And the first of our three tests is the most common and also the easiest to pass. And that's the simple roll on the table test. And as you can see, it easily passes this test and seems to be a perfect roller. So let's up the game and move it on to test two, the rail roll test. So now we roll the cue on the hardwood rail and we look for movement on the tip of the cue. And as you can see, we have the tiniest amount of movement, but that's a pretty outstanding result. So let's get the stinger onto the toughest test of all. Bring out the rollers. Well, bring out the gimp. So this test uses ball bearing rollers specifically designed for testing pull cues. And this test is extremely tough and very, very unforgiving. And the result that we have for the Stinger is amazing. There is virtually zero wobble on this cue. This thing really is as straight as an arrow. And when you remember that this cue has two joints rather than one, that really is a testament to McDermott's build quality. Put simply, wow. Every value I've ever held has been questioned, and I'm loving it. So for the first of our performance tests, we're going to be testing the Stinger's Squirt. And this will be tested over a distance of 75 inches, which is the distance from the head spot to the rear rail. And this test will be done using maximum parallel English coupled with a hard hit. And this test will be repeated at least 10 times on both sides to give us an accurate overall result. Now it is essential to remember that this test is really geared more towards playing cues rather than break cues because generally the application of English applies far more to playing cues. But that said, it's still good information to know, so we tested it anyway. And the Stinger in its break cue form came in at two and three eighths inches, which is a perfectly respectable average level score. And for our second test, we'll be looking at the Stinger's natural pivot length. Now this is a great test for finding out how low the deflection is on the cue. And typically low deflection is definitely what you'll want. Now if you'd like to know a little bit more about how and why we conduct these tests, then we will be producing a separate video outlining the exact testing processes. And once that video is ready, we will add a link into the video description below. And the important thing to remember on this test is that the longer the natural pivot length, then the lower the cue's deflection, and so the better it will score. And once again, remembering that this is a factor that's really more important on a playing cue than a break cue, it's still good to know. And the Stinger came in at 10 and a half inches, which is pretty much bang on the middle of average, which is still a decent result, remembering that this is a break and jump cue and not a playing cue. God's sake, show some balls. I think it's too late to try and impress him. So next we're on to the fun part and that will be testing this beautiful looking cue. And naturally being a break and jump cue, we're gonna to have to test this thoroughly for both tasks. And here at Average Joe's, remember we give every product that we review a minimum of five hours use on the table to ensure that we can bring you a thorough and fair review. So we've got a lot to get through. What do you say? Let's jump right in. It ain't easy being cheesy.
So I've been playing around with the Stinger Q for a good couple of weeks now, uh, so it's had far, far more than our usual five hours uh, minimum requirement for testing. So the first thing that I'd like to address is the build quality of this Q. It is absolutely outstanding. We conducted our usual three roll tests with this Q, and this thing rolls as straight as an arrow. And when you remember, of course, that being a break and jump cue, we have two joints, so you've got two opportunities for things to be out of line, and yet this thing really, really does roll 100% straight, even on the rollers, which is a really, really harsh test. So whoever's making these cues for McDermott absolutely is taking the quality control very, very seriously, which is great to see. This is also reflected in the precision of its craftsmanship. This thing really is a beautiful looking cue uh, with the rosewood handle here and especially with these gorgeous little rosewood inserts. And you can really appreciate the quality of these when you unscrew the end handle here and you look down from the end and you can see the inserts within the wood. It's, it's beautiful and really does show off the craftsmanship that's gone into this. And I also love the fact that there, there are several versions of the uh, Stinger Q available. They're all uh, the same Q but essentially in different colours. And McDerma also produced this, the NG01W, which is identical to this but does come with the linen wrap handle. And they also make an NG06, 07 and 08. And those variations come with different designs in either black or white and uh, also the NG08 comes with a rubber sports grip. However, the NG01, which is the version that we have here, is the cheapest variant of this queue, and this is currently $325 on Amazon. Now, for my money, this is by far the most attractive of these variants. With the NG01, you have this beautiful stain and coming in with the uh, rosewood inserts, so you can really see and appreciate uh, not only the uh, workmanship, but also the quality of the materials in this queue. And in my opinion, on some of the other versions, which are the solid black or the solid whites, you tend to lose that appreciation for the quality of the materials and the uh, quality of the wood. But at the same time, I do appreciate that this is a fairly traditional looking design. And so this may not appeal to everyone, and some people absolutely may want a more modern looking queue. But with five different variants of this queue available, there's definitely something for everyone. But my personal taste would definitely be the NG01. And the other thing I really liked about this queue is how solid it feels, not only when you're doing a kind of vibration test on it as well, but how solid all of these joins feel. Uh, it's absolutely, you know, as tight as can be. It's got a really, really nice, strong, solid feel to it. And I also really like the uh, quick release uh, on the uh, end handle here. You know, it takes literally two, three seconds and it's off. So the next thing we should have a look at is going to be performance. Shine him up. They don't make Van like TK anymore. Broke a million hearts, you know, on and off the table. And what we have to remember, of course, is this is a jump and brake cue, so it's been manufactured specifically to do two very different jobs. So first of all, what about its performance as a brake cue? So as a brake cue, it does perform pretty well, but it's definitely not the best brake cue I've ever used. Whilst using it as a brake cue, I found it to be fairly accurate, and the power, uh, again, as a brake cue, I would say it's somewhere about average. So as a brake cue, it does perform well, it does what it's designed to do, and it does it fairly well. It's not gonna set the world on fire, uh, but it's decent. So how about when we use the Stinger as a jump cue? Well, this is where I found that the Stinger excelled. I found it to be a far better jump cue than brake cue. And one important thing to remember with the uh, Stinger cue uh, is that it does have a patent, and that's for the stem that sits in uh, behind the tip here. And although, of course, you can't actually see this technology being used, but Dermot claimed that it provides a larger sweet spot and more forgiving hit, which in theory would suggest that you can hit this ball slightly off and still get the results that you wanted. Now, whether this uh, technology actually does anything or not, I don't know. Uh, however, I found this to be a extremely accurate jump cue. Now, to be able to test this specifically as a jump cue, we made sure that we did lots of drills, and we made sure that we did hundreds of jump shots using this cue. Now, what I found in the past with cheaper jump cues, it can be hard to get the cue ball control. So you may successfully get the jump over the ball, but on the way to the object ball, maybe the uh, cue will be putting a little bit of side spin on that you weren't expecting, and so you can end up missing the final object ball. But what I found with the Stinger, it was very, very easy to get good cue ball control. It was very easy to get the cue ball to travel perfectly straight and likewise if you wanted to purposefully add spin onto the ball 
you could do that with this as well. So this cue definitely added an additional level of confidence in my jump shots. In fact, during the test, we decided to go a little bit crazy and we were jumping over and through various different things. Uh, we stacked up uh, racks of balls and we were jumping over them and still potting the, uh, the balls on the, uh, on the other side of the table. Uh, so even though you were jumping particularly high, you could still get it to go perfectly straight and uh, you could repeat that shot several times with this cue, uh, which is absolutely fantastic. So as a jump cue, I'm a big, big fan of this. Don't hit me with them negative waves so early in the morning. So as you can tell, overall, I was very impressed by the Stinger. But was there anything that I didn't like? Well, my only concern with using this as a brake cue is really in the power. Although with the phenolic tip, it is definitely more powerful than using a standard house cue. It's also at the same time, not as powerful as using a dedicated brake cue. But you do have to appreciate that a dedicated brake cue is designed to do one job and one job only. Whereas when you have a combined jump and brake cue, you have a cue that's designed to do two very, very different jobs. And for me, this is definitely a decent breaker, but an excellent jump cue. And was there anything that I didn't like about using this as a jump cue? I only really have one minor niggle, and this does apply to all combined jump and brake cues and is not specific to the Stinger. And that is, once you've unscrewed the handle and you're ready to use it as a brake cue and you want to chalk it up, it's quite awkward uh, to put this uh, end of the cue down. Normally what you want to do is you'd want to put, place that onto the floor and add chalk to the tip of the cue. And of course, as we have no uh, rubber bumper on the end here, and we do have a very nice joint, we don't want to damage any of this. And so really you don't want to be bouncing that around on the floor. And so you've either got to remember to chalk the cue up before you remove the handle, or otherwise what you tend to find, is you end up resting it on your foot whilst you uh, chalk it up. And of course that's a little bit awkward, but like I say, that applies to all brake and jump cues, because as soon as you remove that handle, you've got that bare end and you really don't want to damage it by placing it straight onto the floor. And of course that's where having uh, something like this, which is the optional uh, dedicated jump handle for the Stinger, comes in really handy because it does have the rubber tip. So you can put, put this on the floor just like you would with any other pool cue and chalk it as you would normally. But of course one of the drawbacks of using a dedicated jump handle is you can no longer attach the third section on to use it as a brake cue. And so what you'd have to do if you wanted to swap between jump handle and brake handle is rather than undo the final section, undo it here in the center and then attach the jump handle. But of course this joint here is not a quick release joint and so it does become somewhat awkward. So now it's time to award the Stinger by McDermott its official Average Joe's rating. So first of all, let's score it for features. The Stinger has a very nice phenolic tip coupled with a patented stem design which makes this cue completely unique. Additionally, we also have a really nice quick release jump joint which makes use of the cue really easy. So at $325 this is definitely a well featured cue and so we'll award it a 16 out of 20. Next we're on to straightness and we ran our usual three roll tests on this cue and we were amazed by how straight this cue actually is especially on the roller test, which is very, very unforgiving. And this cue easily matched the level we would expect to see on cues costing two to three times as much. And so it really did excel in this field, especially considering the $325 price tag. So we'll award an 18 out of 20 for straightness. Now on to performance. And we found that as a brake cue, the Stinger performed pretty well. When braking, the cue had good control and accuracy, but the overall power was fairly average. However, when transformed into its jump cue form, this cue really comes to life and excels. Cue ball control during jump shots is excellent and also very consistent. And as a jump cue, this is a seriously decent piece of kit. So overall, as a breaker, it's pretty good. But as a jumper, it's excellent. So this is pretty decent performance at $325, so we'll award a 14 out of 20 for performance. Moving on to quality. And we found it tough to find faults in the Stinger with regards to quality. All of the materials are very good, the shaft profile is very nice, and the cue looks great. And additionally, the cue definitely has a very solid and sturdy feel. And the Stinger would definitely compare very favorably quality-wise with other more expensive jump and brake cues from other major cue manufacturers. So we're happy to award a 17 out of 20 for quality. Next onto the all important value for money. And at $325, the Stinger offers good value. 
It's definitely a considerable amount to invest into a queue, especially if you're fairly new to the game of pool. But you do have to remember that for $325, you're effectively getting two queues in one. And this price actually compares very favorably to combined break and jump queues available from other major queue brands. So we'll award a 16 out of 20 for value. So adding these scores together gives us an overall average Joe's rating of 81 out of a possible 100. A very solid score for a very solid and reliable queue. I don't need luck. I'm good. And so there we have it. This is the Stinger by McDermott. So at $325 on Amazon for this combined break and jump queue, overall this offers decent value for money. The quality of this queue is outstanding and it offers the combination of a superb jump queue coupled with a very decent break queue. And also don't forget to factor in that this queue comes with a full lifetime warranty from McDermott and that does include warpage. When you take all of these factors into consideration, the NG01 Stinger Q from McDermott is a winner. Now, if you're potentially interested in buying yourself a Stinger Q, we will add Amazon links with the lowest possible prices for the different variations of the Stinger Q into the video description below. And before you leave us, it's worth mentioning that we are going to be producing another dedicated video on the Stinger. And in that video, we're going to be comparing the performance of the standard jump handle versus the optional 75 stub jump handle to see how they compare and is it worth picking one of these up at the same time as buying your main Stinger Q. So if that video is of interest to you, we will add a link to that video in the video description below. So thank you very much for watching. If you found this video helpful or entertaining in any way, can we ask a quick favor? Take one second out of your busy day just to hit that like button for us. And also please consider subscribing to the Average Joe's YouTube channel. We've got loads more great pool content, including equipment reviews waiting for you to check out. We appreciate your support and we'll see you on the next video. Two maggot ciders.